Hebbard from Spark Systems and uh, the webinar today is creating a business capability map using the Spark Systems architecture platform. So I'd like to welcome everyone today. I'll be joined uh, in this webinar today by Nizam Mohammed. I've had the uh, great pleasure of working with uh, Nizam for a number of years. He's a Spark Systems Enterprise Architect consultant and our ProLaborate evangelist with 15 plus years experience with Spark Systems Enterprise Architect, ProLaborate and ProCloud Server and uh, has expertise in training, consultation, customization and support and uh, would work together for a number of years and uh, attended many events in uh, Sydney, Gold Coast, Florida, LA and, uh, and many more. So it's a pleasure to have Nizam here with us. Uh, the agenda, I'll talk about how to submit questions. We'll discuss how to create a business capability map. I'll hand over to Nizam, who's going to conduct a demonstration of how to model a comprehensive multi-level business capability map using Spark Systems tool suite. And at the end of the session, we'll open up for a Q&A and, &A and uh, we'll try to respond to some of those uh, questions. Uh, please note, audio is muted for all participants and you'll be able to type questions to the host and as always, if we can't answer questions live, we'll follow up offline. We usually try to get the webinar video published on Spark Systems YouTube site within 24 hours. And then a week later, we typically answer some of the questions and uh, get them up on the Spark Systems uh, website under the webinar section. So uh, I've already had a couple of people ask, uh, will this be made available? Uh, please note that the uh, the question box is just on the side, so enter the text and hit send or hit enter on the numeric keypad and that'll come through to myself, the host, and uh, we look forward to uh, answering some of those questions at the end of the session. But right now I'd like to hand over to Nizam, who's going to present on uh, our webinar topic and uh, really looking forward to that. So I will um, hand over right now and I will... Uh, uh, look forward to um, the presentation. So welcome Nizam, who's going to talk about uh, creating a, um, a uh, business capability maps using Spark Systems architecture platform. So welcome Nizam. Thank you, Scott. Hello everyone. This is Nizam. Thanks very much for joining uh, in this session. We'll be going through, as Scott mentioned, how to um, model and analyze business capability maps using the Sparks architecture platform. So the idea behind having a webinar like this is to expose all the functionalities that are offered by different products in the Sparks platform to achieve a goal in an enterprise architecture practice. So, you know, we, we are planning to have more sessions along these lines to do application portfolio rationalizations and you know technology mappings and things like that but this is first of this series or in enterprise architecture practice so about myself i think scott already mentioned about it so i've got a fair bit of experience with ea but i'll quickly skip this um uh, in this agenda in this session what we are going to look at is a, I will have a quick intro to what business capabilities are, but I'm pretty sure most of us in this session are quite familiar with what a business capability is and how do we do it. And if you want more information, I'm not an expert in how to define a business capability. There is BizBox and Togavs and Archimates who set standards, give specifications and guidelines on defining them. So I'm not gonna delve a lot into how to write a business capability. However, what we'll be looking at is how do I really create something in EA and collaborate and how do we really make it usable for due diligence and analysis and insights um, for uh, enterprise architecture practice? How do we align this with your know, values and goals and applications and tech stack? So that is that is what I'm planning to focus. And I'm also thinking of having it a little more hands-on to even give you an overview of how I will be creating a model, how I'll be defining a dashboard rather than just showing you on an outset, which you can obviously find it already in our helps and YouTube videos and things like that. I'm going to demonstrate a few things as well. So uh, just this is uh, just like a, a, a note to say this could be a little technical at times, but please bear with me. So what we are looking at uh, to start with is what is a business capability map? And as we all know, that's a 
like it's it's a way to capture all our uh, you know the capabilities that are the building blocks of a stable business and how do we uh, stack up now and what are we planning to do in a number of years and what is our high critical capabilities what are our supporting capabilities and how do we align our strategy with the projects and initiatives and all the implementations that we are going to do downstream so a business capability map is one of the core or the most important step in enterprise architecture as we all know and that gives us some really uh, high value and benefit um, just summarized a few which obviously uh, you would know already but i'm just reiterating it's one of the best tools that we have uh, seen architects agree anonymously that it's one of the best tools to prioritize and focus all our programs projects and initiatives so that these are aligned with our organization's strategy and uh, uh, values and goals and this is also a really good tool to have a common language between the business and the IT team uh, because we can we can start at a very high level business capability and then decompose that into more uh, granular technical capability or even further into a functionality which can be then cascaded or transferred to the technical team for implementation and everyone in the organization is on the same page understanding exactly why they are doing what they're doing so that's the benefit of having a business capability map and this is also to set a context of where we are now what's important for the organization and what we have to do a holistic view of the enterprise and as i said there are several uh, guidelines and best practices and uh, you know standards that define how to come up with the business capability maps there are a number of um, resources available uh, for, uh, for domains for insurances for banks for pensions there's all a whole raft of capability templates that are available but what uh, what is the most often uh, seen picture is these capabilities almost inevitably resides in powerpoints or excels and they are more used for a presentation or a discussion at a point of time rather than being a driver for a longer term strategic um, initiatives or like you know driving your programs and projects so we are going to see how to do these business capability maps using uh, the sparks platform as i said and as a first step I'm going to quickly talk about what are the capabilities that are in the tools. I mean, before that, I'm going to quickly set a context of what I refer to as tools. Most people know Enterprise Architect as the tool from Spark Systems that is used for modeling uh, and visualization purposes. And that is still the most comprehensive modeling tool that is available. But then Spark Systems have also added a suite of products to take the models further to the wider organization. So we've got a couple of uh, tools added to it, namely the ProCloud server, which allows us to take the enterprise architecture practice more to a cloud platform and also integrate with various other tools such as Confluences and ServiceNows and SharePoints and things like that. And then we have the ProLaborate, which is the web-based collaboration platform that is uh, that gives us a tool to curate the models that we create in EA and present it to the stakeholders, uh, to different personas in the way that is consumable by them. So there are a couple of products and they are all stacked up uh, one, on, I mean, stacked on each other. So it, it provides a single seamless platform. So it's, it's uh, you know, seamlessly integrated and the whole thing now even enables a completely SaaS based offering from, from like uh, that, that kind of minimizes the implementation overheads as well. And on top of this, I'll be using one another tool, which is the integration with Microsoft Office, uh, which I will be using to demonstrate how I can take an Excel spreadsheet with my capabilities defined in it and convert it into a EA model. Uh, so these are the tools that I'll be using in, the, in this demo or in this presentation.
So in terms of how to model business capability, as I said, Sparks EA is one of the tools that supports, uh, that has a very strong support for almost all the open group standards, including the Turg apps, the BizBox and Archimates. And as you all know, each of these standards have a significant emphasis on capability. So capabilities becomes the crux of almost all these frameworks. And so the Turg app standard as supported by Spark Systems and also as recommended by Turgap, has business capabilities as one of the prime driver of all the ADMs and the other initiatives. Similarly, BizPoc in this business architecture has capabilities right in the middle to say what is that organization trying to do or what is that uh, they're trying to um, do in the future to align with the value streams and other uh, strategic initiatives. And then comes the notational uh, support like Archimate, for example, has a very comprehensive support for modeling Archimate, uh, like, sorry, uh, business capability. And especially Archimate 3.1 has a dedicated toolbox that allows us to model these capabilities and align them with values and uh, goals and, as, uh, you know, drivers and other things. So just to take a look at how this has been done in EA, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just click on this link to take me to a diagram, which sort of, uh, you know, it, it's a pro-elaborate view or the web view of the EA diagram, but what this shows is how these, these values and capabilities modeled in, um, uh, in EA. And for simplicity, I've, dis, I've kind of um, uh, disconnected all the, I mean, or hidden all the connectors, but what I will see here is on clicking on every single value item here, I can see all the capabilities that are connected to it. And then if I want to take a look at the business capability map, uh, as we all know, where it has a hierarchical categorization of uh, your uh, business capabilities. Uh, again, I've, I've used Archimate to represent this. Um, so you have the L0, L1, and L2 capabilities, each of them connected to each other, and also having all the details associated with it. For example, each of these business capabilities could have um, you know, specific attributes to say, the criticality, the financial impact, or the value to the customers. So there's all these attributes associated with these capabilities that will help us uh, with the due diligence or further analysis. And when we do the modeling, we are able to get it into the model and also show it to the to the wider users as well. And for your information, this was done using Enterprise Architect. And I'm just going to switch to Enterprise Architect with that diagram to show that I used the Archimate 3.1's uh, business capability uh, artifact to create these models. But what I have essentially created is um, uh, a couple of uh, layers of models. So there is, for you could see that there is uh, L0, which is connected to the um, L1, and then L1, which is further connected to L2. So it's all these complex connections and hierarchy that is in the model simplified and shown to us in this diagram. And each of these artifacts are not just boxes and lines as we see in a PowerPoint or a Visio. These are actual model artifacts that are persistent in the, in the database and they have specific attributes to qualify them. So this is a criticality medium level um, uh, capability. And this capability is further connected to my applications and goals and things like that. So this is part of the bigger enterprise architecture catalog. That's what I'm trying to say here. A capability is never looked at in isolation. It's part of the enterprise architecture landscape. And as we are doing the capability map, we also associate them with the goals and um, values and applications, which we will see eventually in this, as, as we move in this session, we'll be looking at it in a little more detail. But let me go back to the presentation just to say um, that we have seen all these standards support capability modeling and Sparks EA has a full support uh, for these standards and let us do the models. I'm just going to show you if you are starting from an Excel or a PowerPoint or a Visio, how do I really build this in EA? So there is always a starting point, which is where most people have a lot of inhibition. So, you know, uh, should I do a, all of them or should I recreate all of them in EA uh, to get started? The answer is no. 
there are so many tools available for you to expedite this process and one of them is that integration with the office tools and what i'm going to show you now is i've got an excel spreadsheet which has uh, the l0 l1 l2 capabilities and with the l2 capability i have uh, its attributes captured here so the criticality the financial impact and the values and i've also got the connection to the previous layers or like to the l1 capability modeled here oh sorry documented here in excel now let's look at how do i convert that into a model so i am trying to recreate so these are two different models i'm switching between two different models this is my actual architecture model and this is the model that i'm going to use to demonstrate how i really created this from scratch so over here this is a l1 capability strategic business management which is part of the strategy l0 but it doesn't have any l2 capabilities and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to convert this excel information into model with all these attributes in place as well in order to let us do the slicing and dicing of other due diligence so to do that what i'm doing is i'm going to uh, the office integration and say import the excel document i'm going to choose that document from my system and the sheet that i want to import is l2 capabilities let me call it l2 capabilities and i have i have defined a predefined profile for it but please uh, you know i mean to, to clarify very clearly there is no fixed templates like most other tools where there's a fixed template this in this integration with um, office is so flexible you can have your own format in which you have excels and words and visios but we will be able to define a, a profile for it and import it inside so i've just chosen this excel and i've chosen a predefined template which i just put together and then i'm going to say preview and i'm going to say import it into ea as a model and in the process it's also prompting me to say hey i can see some interconnections so in my excel i don't i'm not just having data like i'm not just having tags but i'm also having some connections to some other existing artifacts so you can also import connectors uh, in in the first step itself so i'm just going to tell this importer that i have a few l1 capabilities that i have already modeled and they can be found here and once i say that it goes ahead and imports all the l2 capabilities from the excel and then it goes ahead and creates all the necessary connectors as well so it's it's created the elements and the connectors as well and how do i demonstrate that so previously these didn't have the l2 capabilities but now the marketing and sales or the strategic business management has a whole set of l2 capabilities and let me just add them to the diagram to quickly show you that these are readily usable in the model there's no additional steps so each of these objects have been added to the model and have been connected to the right l1 capability as well so what i'm going to quickly do is i'm just going to do a box out of this and put it into the right place so that it that that's the effort required to convert from an excel to a model so this is a really good first step like obviously there's going to be more work to connect this to the applications and goals and uh, values and other things but as a first step to convert something from your current source into ea this is pretty much the effort and what i also want to emphasize is these are not just boxes and lines these are artifacts with empirical data in it so if i'm going to just enable this heat map i can quickly do a further analysis to say which of these capabilities are high critical medium critical or low criticality so this is driven based on tag values but what i am trying to show here is a excel spreadsheet which in other ways could have been used as a pivot sheet i mean pivot table i i, I understand but an excel is always um, the first step it can't be part of your long-term architecture um, repository so converting that into something uh, like this is going to be a really good starting point and we'll see the other benefits in, in in the next moment so let me just go back so in terms of modeling business capability uh, two points to summarize ea and the tools have very extensive support for all the standards but then it also allows you to import or leverage or harvest information from your existing sources
However, there's one additional step that I would like to suggest or recommend for most people who are contemplating to start with EA as a modeling tool. Uh, and the step is to configure EA to your requirements. So whilst I did say TurgApps and BizBox are uh, supported out of the box, in most implementations, taking a big bang approach to implement the entire TurgApp architecture has always been, um, you know, a, I mean, I wouldn't say a failure, but it hasn't gone too far because it's just a lot of uh, work to handle. Uh, by the enterprise architects. Rather, what we would recommend is take a small subset of TurgApp or Archimate that you would like to focus on initially. Just say, I want to focus on capabilities and services. I want to understand the applications associated with it. I want to understand the data associated with it. So you can define a minimalistic meta model and then do the configuration in EA so that it exactly adheres to your meta model definition. So <clears throat> An example is shown here. So I am using Archimate notations to do my meta model, but instead of taking the entire artifact set of artifacts from the Archimate motivation layer, I'm just identifying these are the things I would need at a strategy strategy level. And then these are the things I would need in a business layer. And like everything else could could be extended later on if needed. But the advantage of EA is it's so flexible and configurable that if you define a meta model like this, it will allow you to configure uh, to be configured in a way that your entire modeling practice adheres to this meta model. So that is one recommended step from my side before starting uh, with your serious modeling efforts. And with this, what I'm trying to do is show the strategy layer and the business layer the minimal set of artifacts that i would like to visualize and how are they interconnected so one of the things with ea like most of us would have seen is it, like when we support a standard we have to support it fully and if you are trying to connect a business process to a business service archimate will have six different ways to connect it and then six different rationale to do it but in a day-to-day -day practice, it's really, really hard to get everyone up to speed and to comfort to use or choose from these six different connectors. But a configuration in EA will let us just refine that into one or two connectors that are permissible in your meta model. And then what are all the additional attributes that has to go with it? So the benefits is significant. It's on standardizing it better reporting and data slicing capabilities and it's also easy to scale and minimizes the learning curve so that configuration is a step that i will strongly recommend when someone is considering uh, starting a ea practice or a uh, you know business capability mapping in ea so once this step is done the next thing I would be uh, looking at is how do we use this information for due diligence and for driving insights and decisions? Uh, because we've been, we've been, we all know that a business capability map is best to leave in a PowerPoint. But what is the whole funda in bringing it into an architecture modeling tool? The funda here is to connect it to the strategic strategic objectives and the business services or to the customer journeys and. Uh, goals or uh, you know value streams wherever whatever is applicable so that is where the real insights and due diligence capabilities are enabled and we are going to look at a few tools that are offered by Prolaborate and EA that will allow us to do that so one of the most uh, sought after or the most common way to look at a business capability map is to have a, a landscape view of it with the heat map applied based on some uh, you know important attribute for example here i would like to understand the criticality of my l2 capabilities i want to have a, a map shown to my business users so they could quickly understand these are the high priority capabilities in the marketing and sales uh, stream so that kind of view should be dynamically created so we already saw in ea that we can manually Put them together and lay them out which is also great but these capabilities evolve they move they tend to be added removed modified so we need to have some dynamic capability mapping uh, ability which is something that pro elaborate offers and then we also want to do further analysis for example if you have a 
uh, you know the cost or the value to the perceived value to the customers factored in in your capability maps you should be able to ascertain for example uh, bubble chart is one really really useful feature to say you know how does your capability stack up uh, in in terms of the values and financial impact and that will give us an immediate picture of you know okay marketing is one of the most uh, you know high value and high financial impact capability so that kind of analysis is also really helpful and here comes the next level of analysis where you could go not just within capabilities we could go from capabilities to other layers for example in my model i've got my value stream connected to capabilities and capabilities connected to applications so i can create a cross layer views so that i could quickly understand for the transport capability i have a couple of applications and in those applications a few are in the uat state a few are in the production state and one is running the risk of sunset so that kind of gives anyone with zero enterprise architecture uh, knowledge even to be able to ascertain information or to make quick decisions by just looking at it so these kind of cross architectural layer views are also quite important so what we are going to see now is i'm going to take you to a live dashboard the prolaborate dashboard which is driven from this model so a prolaborate is a web based platform that connects to your enterprise architecture model to your live enterprise architecture model and any changes in this model gets immediately reflected in these dashboards so this is a real time reflection of your underlying uh, models but completely targeted towards the business users or the less uh, technical users so what we are seeing here is the same l0 l1 l2 capabilities but dynamically generated using this map and you can also see that's automatically heat map through a tagged value i will be in a moment showing you how easy it is to define something like this and how is it generated so um, you know instead of just showing you a picture like this i'm, I'm going to demonstrate how to do it but all those views that i showed you in my slide deck are from these dashboards so this is for example across the values to capabilities to applications and this is the cost benefit analysis of uh, l1 capabilities l2 capabilities and as we scroll down further what i have added is even more uh, diligent uh, visualizations and this is more for uh, adept user who are interested to play with the data for example i want to understand marketing and sales i can i can say okay these are the marketing and sales related uh, you know applications and then if i want to go back and take a look at production i can see that these are how, this is how applications stack up against production and i can even go from here into a list view so these are all tools to bring a wider audience to our architecture model so it's you know it's conventionally looked as a separate discipline where it's only the techie people who are uh, who who are like so uh, keen on creating this structured views who will be looking at the architecture models and everyone else will just still be looking at powerpoints we are trying to change that by having a view that is appealing to both audience but driven from the same uh, model so that's that's the whole idea behind having this kind of visualization driven out of your ea models so this uh, you know i can i can again play with this and i can quickly change the list and uh, look at a different list of uh, capabilities or applications as well so it's it's a in, in interactive platform uh, that is bringing the data from your ea models and publishing it here as promised what i'm going to show there is also a further analysis view which i'll come in a moment but as promised what i'm going to show is how or what is the effort to define a dashboard like this because most people when they look at a presentation like this the first question they would usually come up with ah oh, it all looks good but you know it's just going to take you know years of efforts to bring something like this uh, in reality it's not so i'm going to just do a new capability dashboard and just to give you a bit of a understanding i'm going to go back to the ea model and tell you this is exactly what i'm going to use so there's a l0 l1 l2 capability and each of them are connected to each other uh, through an aggregation relationship this is all the information that you would need to know you don't have to write queries you don't have to write scripts you don't have to do any fancy stuff to define something like this so 
uh, let's take a look at how to define one of these. I'm just uh, I'm in the Prolaborate dashboard designer utility, and I'm going to say I want to add a new EA chart or an EA database chart, and you have a a variety of options that you can use for different reporting purposes and let me start with the landscape chart and as i said we expect any normal ea user to be able to de define a chart like this of course there are pro users who will be able to write sql queries to drive their visualizations but our focus is more to help anyone with the, with some basic understanding of the tools and a good understanding of the EA model to be able to drive this. So uh, I'm using the designer to do a landscape chart and all I'm going to do is I want to find where my capabilities are in my model. So I'm going to start from my L0 capability and I'm going to select this. The moment I select it, the designer will say, hey, there are a couple of artifacts in it and I can see capabilities in this package. So I'm going to say I want to have capability as my first level. Then I say I want to go from the L0 to L1 and I'm going to say add one more level. And I'm as I'm saying that I'm saying I want to look at the connected items. So L0 is connected to L1. So I'm just going to say I want to have an aggregation based relationship to go to the level two. As I said, uh, apologies for being a little technical. I want to show this to people who want to really give it a hands on try. So uh, if it is too technical, please ignore for the next couple of minutes. But we are going from L1 to L2. And as I said, we don't have to be a SQL expert. You don't have to write any scripts to do that. It automatically brings what is what it's finding in the model. I'm saying I want to go to the level two and I want an aggregation connector. And then it says, at an aggregation, you could see Archimate capabilities again. So this is my L1 capability. Now I'm going to say I want one more level. And again, I want to say I want to go for aggregation connectors. There are other connectors showing up as well because my capabilities are connected to applications. My capabilities are connected to goals and values. So this is the only filtering you have to do to make sure it kind of goes in the way you would intend to have the map. So I'm saying I want aggregation connectors and then I'm going to say uh, it's again a capability. So this is L0, L1, L2. And to add some flavor to it, at the level two capability, I also know there are a couple of attributes. As, as I said, like we just imported or we created these models with a couple of attributes like criticality, financial impact, values, etc. I would like to do a heat map. And to do that is again very simple. I just say I want to do a color coding based on the tagged values. And the moment you say that, the Prolaborate will fetch you what are the applicable tagged values here. So you could see that it's you don't have to remember anything, you don't have to query anything. It, it it's all shown to us. And then I'm going to say I want to do it based on criticality. And that's pretty much it in terms of definitions. And then it's about the aesthetics of it. So you know how do I want to uh, to look so you know I'm just going to do some uh, aesthetics like in say level zero I want to have a red border and uh, I, would, I would probably give it a miss but just for the completion purpose just to show you uh, it's it's plain you know it's simple to do something like this I'm defining this and at level two I'm also uh, given an option to expand and define colors for he each of my heat map items so I have a high medium low because I'm, I'm going to do a heat map based on my uh, criticality tagged value. So I've got a high, medium and low options. And uh, for this, I'm just going to say I want to have green, amber and red. OK, I'm just making up some colors here and then it also gives me further options to set your font sizes like aesthetics uh, but it's so important because we are going to do this as a presentation tool to my end users and that's pretty much the effort uh, that is required and i'm just going to go save this and look at it so you can see that i have pretty much defined a multi level capability map with a few clicks that's how i at least see it and you should also be able to appreciate that it's it's uh, you know it's automatically parsing the model and giving us that ability to define something like this 
so you know the colors and looks i'm really bad with color selection excuse me for that but you could you could see it's it's customizable and configurable and this could be a really good presentation tool when 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 we want to go to the wider stakeholders similarly if i want to define uh, like a, a, a bubble chart that's even simpler because it's a single level chart i can use the designer and I'm going to say I would like to again go for the business capabilities, but this time let me just do it for the L1 capabilities. And I'm going to say I want my X axis to be a tag value and my X axis is my financial impact. And then Y axis is another tag value. And let me say it's the value for the customer. And that's pretty much it in the bubbles. Whatever you want to show you can uh but you know it just gives me that option to either show the default properties like name or alias or you can also show something else and then i'm just saying the size of the bubble is again a tagged value and we have a number of options that we can set here as well uh but just with the interest of uh, time i'm just going to keep it simple i'm going to have this chart shown up here and that's pretty much the effort required to define a bubble chart each of the charts are taking live data so if i go and update one of these capabilities in my ea model or if i do a re-import from excel and update these tag values or if I send it out for a review and someone clicks on one of these and goes ahead and updates it from Prolabrate as well, these charts are instantly updated. So, you know, there's a number of ways we can engage the people to update and maintain it. And these dashboards are dynamic, as you can imagine. So, what we saw now in this session is, you know, uh, the first step was how to create these models or how to harvest them from external sources. But then in this step, what we saw was essentially how do I really use those models or how do I, uh, uh, you, know, you know, create some useful, meaningful visualizations based on it. And then comes some even more advanced tools. So these tools will help us to do further analysis. You know, all this uh, first few steps was to present your capabilities as they were created, but then both EA and Prolabrate has uh, other tools to let us create the necessary interconnections to other layers. For example, uh, I can, if I want to understand the dependency between my capability to applications, I'm having a matrix uh, defined, which shows me this is how my capabilities are connected to my applications or if i want to look at how my values are connected to my business capabilities and if i want to even create a new connection it's as simple as going and creating a new connection here so the first step is about importing it and creating meaningful visualizations but then the next step is about interconnecting that to the other layers so that you'll be able to uh, you know do an impact analysis if needed which is uh, which is what we are going to look at next. So these matrices are also shareable through Prolabrate. So you can create a view, a simplified matrix that you can even share to anyone. It's it's a, as simple as just sharing. Sorry, it's a you can even email it out to people to come and take a quick look and review. But if if you are intending to you you know share this to users who would like to do some what if analysis or further analysis themselves. There are tools to allow that as well. So this is a tool, we call it the impact analysis view that will allow us to expand a tree or like, you know, start from a capability or from an application and understand how things are impacted. So you could you could apply filters. You can you can do a word of analysis. Essentially, you can understand what what will happen if something changes. So for marketing and sales, I have a couple of capabilities which are then connected to the couple of applications. And if I want to drive delve deeper, I could say I want to. So you could see the moment I click on the application, I can see the data, the technology stack, the processes and number of other things shown up as well. So it will become a bit messy if I add all these. But let me just show you I can I can add the projects and nodes and uh, the tech stack and then from this application i'm having one more layer to understand oops 
okay i'll i think i i just added uh, uh, there it is so it's it's you know it's getting four levels of data so i started with the capability it's going to l2 and then the application and then from the application i'm now able to understand the data that's connected to it the tech stack that is connected to it and even the projects that are connected to it so this kind of uh, do, you know what if analysis is also enabled from the same data of from the model that we created so these are some of the benefits as you can see like you know it's not just about creating a pretty looking uh, multi level capability map it's about you know the ability to let people do this due diligence and play with the data so that they can drive some decisions and they can do it from anywhere so if i want to for example take one of these uh, in the relationship matrix understand what is it connected to and like you know this is the quick view to say these are the other things that are connected to or if i want to create a new impact analysis view based on a predefined profile it's just a matter of few seconds to convert uh, you know to to go from an object to a comprehensive view so i just started with the uh, Sorry, I just started with one of these capabilities, used one of the predefined profiles, and it has already built a view for me, which is from production. These are the L2 capabilities, and from the L2 capabilities, these are all the applications. So as the view gets bigger, as the data gets bigger, of course, it will take a few. It's it, it's going to be a bit, uh, uh, you know, it's going to take a while to build it, but then it again gives us the ability to uh, minimize it or maximize it. So it's these are some of the um, uh, capabilities that would give even the non EA users an ability to use the data that we model and you know drive some decisions out of it so that's that's what I wanted to highlight here so these are some of the advanced analysis tools that I wanted to show and uh, just coming back to the agenda so we started with how to define a capability map or what is a capability map how to harvest it into EA and then we looked at how do we really make use of the data that we harvest into EA and why is it so important to have it in a central repository connected to the other artifacts instead of having it in an Excel or a PowerPoint, which is the usual alternatives. And the last step here I would like to show is to have architecture reviews facilitated through the Sparks platform once again. So the, the, the approach that we always say is identify the sources, harvest it into EA on, and use the ProLaborate to do the reviews and engage the wider stakeholders. So through their continuous feedback, you'll be able to improve your models. And to do that, why is it so important to do that? You, we all know as architects like it's we are always seen as a different group and like you know no one even comes and talks to me if i work in a client's place uh, because they they they'll be afraid i'll ask them some questions but what we really want to do is to break that kind of a tower syndrome and engage people to have a continuous feedback and to do that what we have enabled is this kind of feedback and collaboration layers on top of your EA models. So yeah, EA models are for the technical architects and uh, you know solution designers, but then a curated view through a web a portal like with simplified dashboards and charts as I shown is the one that we target to different personas, to different stakeholders. But whatever we are showing them, <clears throat> is going to circle back to us as feedback. We can invite them via emails. You can share to them a link in a, in a, in a chat and then ask them to come and collaborate. But whatever they do as a feedback will circulate back to us because uh, if, if as a modeler, I look at my notification, I see Beth has created a new discussion in one of these diagrams. I can see that there's a diagram and there is a comment from one of the stakeholders who says these capabilities may need further decomposition so that's a feedback that i would really want to a avail from them which in other cases would have been through an email i would have lost somewhere uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks but this is stored against this particular artifact and if i want to edit this make any changes and socialize it back to them it's a seamless process there's no manual publishing there's no manual notifications the next time she visits this diagram, it would be the updated version uh, as you do in the in the model. So a collaboration framework built on top of your EA diagrams and models is what we are talking about to break this uh, you know, gap between architects and the wider community. 
and to enable uh, even smoother uh, engagement process what we have done is you know we have a review mechanism so if i log in as one of the users uh, let's say um, let me just log in as um, some other user And the moment he or she logs in, they will see the dashboard that is specifically designed for them. So no two personas are expected to see the same thing. So if, uh, you know, this is, for example, Andy is part of the enterprise architecture discipline and they get to see a slice of my capabilities, but not just around L1, L2, L, L0, L1, L2, rather how my capabilities are connected to the bigger value stream. How are my capabilities connected to my enterprise goals? You know, how do I uh, how do I let them drill down through one of these to understand my goals to portfolios to projects that are currently active? So this is also the same kind of information same information from the same underlying model But curated in a completely different way so that they will be able to make sense of it And if I log in as another user, let's say I want to log in as Beth Let's say Beth is part of the business analysis uh, discipline. She gets to see what is intended for her. At the same time, she would also get notification that there is a capability review that's happening. And in that review, so there'll be email notifications and reminders sent to them that she's been invited as a reviewer for the business capabilities reviews. And she just goes, looks at it. These are all the capabilities that we want them to either say I'm fine with it or we want them to uh, we want them to give us some feedback and if I want to look at the capabilities landscape diagram they don't have to really open a tool they don't have to navigate to anything specific all they have to do is click a link it gets it's it takes them to this uh, diagram and all and they have to do is just click on one of these and say I would like to add a new discussion so this she has already added a new discussion but I'm just going to highlight it once again so you know <clears throat> refer to Andy for more information so these are the typical emails that we get but I can in this case say refer to Andy and tag him as well so you know I am using my models to tag users and start a new discussion and the moment I do this I go back to my view which is the Nizam like my original view and I could see that new chat already appears in my portal or in my port and I am okay to action on this and similarly Andy would have been notified via an email as well so you know a, a mechanism to engage the stakeholders at the same time as we are building this model and connecting to the other artifacts is what is making a huge difference in acceptance and buy-in from the wider team so that's that's pretty much what I wanted to share as the uh, last point so you know engaging the right stakeholders uh, and the tools that are in the platform that allows us to do it has uh, is, is seen to be making a huge difference and you know this is again another factor that is a compelling reason to move from Visios and PowerPoints into something like a more a real time modeling tool and also have them in a central repository so in summary <coughs> these are the uh, you know, we, we had a quick look at what's the significance of uh, doing a business capability mapping, which, as I said, like, you know, I'm I'm no expert in this. There are much better people and you would know much better than me. But what I really wanted to show was how do I really use the tools in the platform to uh, a import them, model them and then b drive some insights and further due diligence and analysis capabilities using that and also to be able to socialize and curate it to the wider stakeholders so this model is continuously updated and active excellent thanks very much Nizam uh, there's a few questions coming through uh, so I might just uh, jump in if that's okay um, yes please so there are a number of times that you uh, were showing WebView in ProLaborate and uh, you're talking about live. Can you talk about some of the advantages of using ProLaborate to look at live data rather than just offloading the capability map into a PowerPoint presentation and um, having it static and out of date? 
Yes, absolutely. So, you know, the advantage of such a platform that we that we are looking at now where there is a diagram that's live from EA and, you know, shown uh, to the wider users is so I'm now what what I just did was I want to quickly jump from this and open my EA editor. So l let's assume uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm I'm toggling between an architect who is going to do their models or update the models using enterprise architect which is still the modeling tool so if you want to draw anything if you want to create interconnections ea is the tool but any small ch any changes that you make in this uh, if you want to socialize it back to the stakeholders so let me just take this and um, you know apply a color so i'm just you know making a very trivial change but even this change the next time someone visits this diagram in their viewer would have been updated in their live view so what we are essentially seeing is two different tools catered towards different personas different people looking into the same repository which means no work is going to go redundant or like you know they're not going to look at dead and stat like stale information this is a live model that they are looking at and some further extension of this use case will be that this diagram can also be linked to their share points and confluences so a change in the model seamless seamlessly gets cascaded to all the view uh, portals that they can facilitate to different stakeholders and this is uh, this is every this is in all ways better than having in a excel or a powerpoint or even in a disconnected model because you know one of the things that we are always expected to do when we are given a document is to make sure that this is current like you know the document gets uh, static the moment it's published you know the moment it's reviewed and updated it, it it's outdated as well so you know when when we get a document we need to go back and validate if it's current once again but a model and a live update to all of these in a central repository would completely make uh, you know eliminate this uh, overhead of going and validating if it's a current information thanks Nizam. and while the color example is somewhat trivial if that was sales data or if that was um, feedback from the factory room floor that was being <laughs> updated every 10 minutes and was crucial to you know business capability then that real-time live update um, could have a real impact on a corporation or company. So it's really important that um, we can provide that uh, in an instant. So okay. I had a, another question um, that said, can the information be hosted on the cloud or on premise? So would you be able to talk about that? Absolutely, yes. So, you know, having an on-premise solution has always been the option uh, that is uh, that's that was available uh, but what is different now is to also have it in the cloud so this entire stack including the uh, <clears throat> as i said pro cloud server is a set of apis and the tools that will allow us to connect to the database uh, through a HTTPS connection and also to be able to allow connections from JIRAs and ServiceNows and confluences and other tools. So the entire stack can be hosted in an on-premise solution as well. So, and we have seen, you know, it's, it's almost uh, half to half, like, you know, half of our customers would have gone through the cloud platform, either hosted in AWS or Azure, or they would have their internal data centers in which they would host it. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Tazar. Uh, there's another question uh, from Dean that talked about, have you had any example with um, using this for board engagement and for, you know, talking with, you know, members of the board or people responsible for governance in a way that allows you to convey strategic information as well as uh, business capability information? Yep. So, uh, I mean, that's that's the whole idea. So it depends on what we uh, mean by uh, like, you know, the the board, but, you know, def depending on what is the core or the, the, the key focus of those personas, we can define these dashboards. So as I said, these dashboards, there are a, a whole raft of dashboards I have defined and these are catered towards different people. So if it's an enterprise, uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've, I've taken a slightly technical persona here, I understand, but this could be even further simplified with, uh, you know, uh, e you know, even reduced views to cater to a, 
uh, executive board as well but all we are uh, saying here is the, the dashboarding facility is it's not a one size fits all sort of thing so as long as we we are able to ascertain what is uh, what is the expectation from from those people we will be able to use a, a variety of constructs uh, as it's a live presentation i can't show a few things um, yeah, that we have okay. done for the clients but uh, you know a use using a combination of images and uh, you know diagram thumbnails and charts we have created really kid like you know targeted dashboards for uh, any any kind of stakeholders yes uh, following up on those charts, you've showed impact analysis and a capability diagram, but uh, what are some of the other charts that are available um, that can be used in ProLabro? So uh, these are at the moment all the supported charts, uh, but you know the, uh, the the list can grow if there's a need for it. But these are more more or less in you know uh, sufficient to. Uh, to, to handle a lot of these use cases. So let me just show you a few charts based on my existing dashboards. So all that I've shown for the enterprise, like the capabilities is the multi-level landscape charts. But if I quickly switch to my application portfolio, you could see I've, I've extensively used the bars and pies to show how my applications, for example, are categorized by criticality or how my applications are stacked up against the architecture type uh, or a roadmap to indicate when I mean the status of this life cycle of these applications <clears throat> So this these are some of the different other usages of these charts um, and you know different dashboards as I said Depending on whom I am who I am catering to would have different charts So this for example is all my enterprise level initiatives or projects aligned to my business goals But instead of showing it in a flat structure. I want them to click and dive through it and then if they want to have a quick view of all those capabilities or the projects that meets their criteria they could just switch to a list view thanks Tanzam. you talked about bubble settings that are related to tagged values so what's the advantage of being able to use uh, tagged values in addition to some of the attributes within archivate and toga itself okay so uh so it's uh, that's a very good question. So it's almost inevitable. So the argument especially is really, really good in terms of notations, but <clears throat> the tagged values is one of the most uh, important part of an architecture repository because uh, let, let me just quickly open my application inventory to show you what, what I refer to as tagged value. So I, I could go and say I have all my applications and this is how it's connecting to each other but the real due diligence or slicing and dicing is possible only when we have data points and those are the like attributes that I'm referring to for example each application has information such as you know the business units and costs and life cycles security classification so these are the kind of questions that are thrown at architects you know the, the usual question that comes up is uh, okay, we are going to have um, a, a, let, Let's say a change in uh, circumstances and I want to understand all the low or the public Applications to be listed immediately So if a question like this comes up without a tag value or an attribute in my model I might have to look at some other source of information to get this and it's it's not very uncommon like, you know, for example, I've got another set of applications which i imported from service now and like it's those configuration management databases which are uh, meant to have these tags in even more extensive manner and ea can even import it from them and maintain it for us so i use capabilities i mean tags and capabilities but a more uh, commonly used space is this applications and these are some of the service now capabilities sorry uh, service, service now applications and you could see all these are tags that are imported from service now it's, it's exactly the same like you know the type of it the classification of it the, the readiness of it the cloud readiness of it operational status of it and these are so important if it is only going to be boxes like if it's only going to be notations it's good for a diagrammatic representation but it wouldn't give us that ability to 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 really uh, do any further due diligence so like this for example the entire dashboard is driven on tagged values like criticalities and life cycles and strategic importance so that's that's where uh, there's an 
you know a lot of emphasis on having the right attributes captured for your models and you can of course tailor those to an infinite degree within enterprise architect to suit your individual corporate needs so exactly uh, yep. fantastic um, i'm conscious of the time so i'll just do a, a couple uh short um ones to finish off um so if people need help and they've viewed this presentation and they're an existing ea customer but they want help to install pro cloud server and collaborate or help to move forward what is uh the best way to get in touch and to um to move forward Oh, that's, I mean, that's that's a question I would all I would have anticipated. So you know, so if you want to, uh, you have two options to take this forward. One is you can try all these, uh, you know, the the offerings in your own infrastructure. So we can help you get started in an on-premise trial where you could you, you could have the Pro Cloud Server and Pro Elaborate installed on top of your EA practice, and extend your model and use these capabilities or you can also request a 30 day trial in which we set up the enti entire environment even with the same example model that I, I used in this demo we'll, we'll share this exact sample model with the sample dashboards so that you can understand how it's been done and then uh, see how that could be related or how that could be applied to your data as well so please reach out to uh, us in prelaborate uh, at sparksystems.com and we'll be able to quickly assist. And uh, there's a question here that we usually get. Uh, there's one here from uh, Giles saying, it's uh, such a good webinar and is it possible to get access to it? And I said it at the top of the uh, webinar, but I'll um, mention it just again, that the Spark Systems YouTube site will try to have it published within uh, 24 hours. And if you go to sparksystems.com slash webinars, uh, we publish usually within a, a week, and that usually gives us time to answer the questions. There are many more questions than we've been able to get to tonight, but uh, we will I'll <laughs> send you a list, uh, Nizam, to uh, have a look through, and uh, we'll get some responses to those and get those published on the, the um, Spark Systems website within the week. So uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for your time and for the excellent presentation. It's really fantastic to see, you know, things being imported from, you know, Word and Excel, modelled in EA, um, distributed via the ProCloud server, having, you know, reports and dashboards there live in ProLaborate, um, being able to engage with customers and um, communicate and talk to stakeholders um allowing you to make decisions quickly and in real time and uh to see it all uh, demonstrated in an hour is fantastic so Zam, thanks once again for your expertise and your uh, wonderful presentation and uh, i'd like to thank our audience that has uh, uh been here today and uh look forward to seeing you at future webinars so uh, uh please reach out to prolaborate sparksystems.com if you uh, want any help um, on pricing or costing or implementing and uh, look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Thanks, Nizam. Thank you very much, Scott, and thanks everyone for your valuable time. Appreciate it.